Hello, Marcel here, and today we're going to learn how to create hair simulations using Ornichooks for Maya. And to create the simulations, we will use the built-in end cloth functionality inside Maya, which is already very powerful, and we are going to tap into this power to drive our hair simulation. So I have this scene of a character being animated. This scene was provided to us by Shems Alion, and we are very thankful for that. So this is pretty basic. This character is being driven by a bone simulation and what I'm going to do first is add some hair to this guy. So I'm just going to zoom in and I'm going to select this mesh over here and go into face mode. I'm just going to use the techniques we have already covered in other tutorials to add some hair to a predefined set of faces. So first I'm just going to select a bunch of faces and let's just pretend that this is going to be our character scalp. Of course, you would probably either have a scalp mesh or something else already in place. So in this case, our character is already simulated, but in a typical scenario, you would do this well before the simulation begins and probably during the stage of modeling the character. So by the time you create skeletal animation, you already have hair. But for the sake of this tutorial, let's just create the hair at this point. So next thing I'm going to do is go to Ornatrix shelf and just use the quick hair button and it's going to plant the hairs just on the selected faces and as we can see the hairs are way too long. I guess the scale of the scene is kind of a little bit smallish so I'm going to get rid of the hair from guides node and the edit guides shape for now and I'm going to set the distribution to uniform just so we get more hairs. Change the length a little bit to whatever we're comfortable with and this looks about right. So once I'm happy with the results I need to add a mesh from strands modifier to this to essentially make this hair into flat billboards. To do this, I'm just going to click on the topmost modifier and the mesh from strands button will add our operator, which will convert it to a mesh. So I'm going to use the render settings node to control the width along the hair length and I'm, I'm going to make it uniform. We want to simulate each hair strand as a piece of cloth. To do this, each hair strand will be a little bit of a strip and it needs to have some kind of thickness. The thicker the hair strand is, the better suited it will be to preserving the shape of the strand. But at this point we're not really concerned about this, so let's leave it like this. In the mesh from strands node, there are a couple of parameters that need to be set. And first one is you need to check the is guide mesh parameter. And second one is you need to ensure that we are in the flat ribbon mode and not any other mode. This is the default, so typically you do not need to change anything. Once you have selected this option, all you need to do is click the Create Nucleus Simulation button. When you do this, after a very tiny pause, you can see that our hair has been converted to a bunch of lines as opposed to the mesh that we had before. And if we select these lines and open our hair stack view, you can see that above the mesh from strands node, we now have the cloth shape, the nucleus cloth shape shape and then above that we convert the cloth shape back into guides and this is actually pretty easy to understand what's happening is mesh from strands is being simulated as a cloth and then this cloth mesh is being converted back into guides that Ornatrix can use for other operations and if I play back my scene at this point let me just zoom out a little bit so we can see the effects you can see that the hair is indeed actually simulated at this point a nucleus is driving our hair and it is behaving actually not too bad at this point. Next thing we can do is we can go back and maybe find a way to fine tune some of the parameters that are associated with simulating the nucleus hair. To do this, I just press the nucleus cloth shape and cloth shape node. And then I will go into the dynamic properties. And here I can adjust values such as stretch resistant, which will make my hairs less or more stretchy, depending on the effect that I want. And I can change the restitution angle. So if I add some kind of initial shape to my hair, this will preserve the shape better. I can also increase the rigidity of my hair. So if I set it to 0.2, Two, my hair is going to be slightly more rigid and all the other parameters that Nucleus provides you can set just like you would with a cloth simulation and this adds a lot of power and control to the things that you can do with the hair simulation. So if I click back on my guides for mesh node and I press simulate right now the simulation will update and the settings that we have just set will apply right away in our scene. So you see the hair is a lot less bendy and it is a little bit more 
rigid and in fact it seems to be a little bit too unstable at this point so I'm just gonna go back to my end cloth shape and maybe reduce the rigidity parameter a little bit set it to a much smaller value to reset my simulation I always press the go to the start of the playback range and at this point the nucleus simulation will be reset the reason why you don't see any hairs right now is because we are actually seeing nucleus cloth shape and if we wanted to see the hair we can use the display color and set it to something like collision thickness and this displays what is actually being simulated by Maya. So if I just scroll back right now you can see that the hairs are moving with our character and this is essentially what Maya nucleus simulation sees while it is performing all of the dynamics. At this point if I change my mind and if I wanted to modify the shape of the hairs I can always go back down in my modifier stack and add some more operators. So for example I can add a edit guide operator and Maybe I can use the brush and modify the shape of my hairs a little bit. So I'll just decrease the brush strength and I'll put some hairs forward. As you see, the nucleus collision display is updating in real time as we are brushing our hair. And in fact, it is updating the nucleus simulation to fit the shape changes that we are doing to the hair. So at this point, I have brushed the hair and maybe I want to add another operator. Let's say I'll add some curling and let me just decrease the magnitude so it's not as crazy. And maybe I'll also decrease the phase of the curling. So just to give it some more funkier shape. And if I start playing back at this point, all of the changes that we have made will have also made it into the nucleus simulation. Let me just restart and go to my cloth shape and adjust some parameters to make the hair shape be preserved a little bit better. So I have changed some of the settings like the mass, which I decreased and I have also added some bend resistance and some deformation resistance which adds a little bit more of a realistic hair effect because hairs are a bit lighter and in fact during the simulation you can see that some of the hairs even get tangled between each other which causes the hair shape to be modified a little bit while the character is jumping around in the scene. One of the problems that we are currently facing inside the simulation is that the hair is penetrating our character mesh which is not really desired. Solving this problem is is actually very simple and doesn't require much effort at all. All we need to do is go to Outliner and in there we will see a rigid shape added for our character mesh while creating the end cloth hair simulation. When I have selected this end rigid shape I will be presented with a collisions drop down inside our attribute editor. You can actually see that this mesh is part of a nucleus simulation by turning on the collision thickness display so it is displaying the collision mesh right now and you can turn on collisions between the hair and our character mesh by checking the collide button. If you have a separate character mesh that you would like to collide with hair, all you need to do is select it and then go to end cloth menu entry and create a passive collider while having that object selected. So if I simulate at this point, let me just go back to my end cloth shape and turn off the collision preview so we can see our final hair. If I go back to the start and I press simulate, the hair will now no longer penetrate our mesh because it will actually collide with it. At this point we are still dealing with guides and not the renderable hair that will be rendered with our character. So the last part of our hair stack needs to be something that converts our guides into hair. And to do this conversion all we need to do is add the hair from guides operator. Once I add it we now have hair instead of guides and I'm just going to change the distribution type just like we did before. And I will also add another render settings modifier right below it. The end hair animation is still live so if I play back our hair will still be driven by the end cloth simulation just like it was before but now we also can add parametric effects after the simulation has been performed so after the guides from guide mesh node I can insert more hair operators like clustering or clumping or frizz or curl or anything else that you might choose to improve the appearance of your hair and all of these effects will be applied after the simulation has taken place so you can adjust the parameters and have these operators be applied non-destructively in your scene of course just as before you can always turn off these operators and you can even turn off the hair to see your simulated guides again there are a few other things that are useful to do when you have hair simulated this way one of the things you might want to do is pick a frame where you like the appearance of your hair. For example, if at the first frame the hair is spiking out of your character in all directions and you want to use the gravity to put the hair around your character, so you can go to the frame that you like and use the end cloth 
rest shape option to set the start rest shape for the hair. The other very useful thing to have is the ability to actually cache out these hair animations and then apply them at a later point or just use the cache to speed up the display of the hair without having it being simulated by Nucleus. To do this, go to the main menu and you will find the end cache submenu where you can create a new cache and use the end object cache type. When I click it, the cache will start generating and it will go through a time line one keyframe at a time and it will record all of the animation into a cache file which you can change inside the end cache properties. Right now it is just doing this into a default location on my hard drive. So once this is done I can interactively scrub back and forth in my animation and this is no longer being simulated which means it's going to be very quick and I'm going to see my hair animated in real time. So just like with other nuclear simulations you can load more than one cache and you can have your character be animated in different ways and save out a cached file for each one of those animations. So this gives great control for the production during the animation stages of your hair. Of course, even at this point, I can go and turn on my hair from guides operator, including the parametric operators working on the hair. And again, I'm going to see my animation be applied in real time. And this is really handy for previewing what your character is going to look like when it will be rendered. So in this tutorial, we have covered how to use Maya's end cloth to drive Ornatrix hair simulations in Maya. But a lot of this is just scratching the surface of what's possible. And if you want to learn more, you can use Google to find information on how to work with the nucleus and end cloth to do a lot more advanced things with it.